Ecamm Live version 3.10 beta 8 was released last week and it's got a couple of new features, one of which is right up my street and that is built-in integration with Apple's own automation app, the Shortcuts app. So let's have a look, shall we? Uh, first of all, if you are not currently using the beta, you may want to try it out if you're an existing Ecamm user. Uh, there's no application process as such. You can just go and download it. It runs in parallel to the regular version. So uh, it's definitely worth trying out if you want to try out some of these new features. It's very stable as betas go as well. So I generally use it uh, full-time as my main sort of production environment, but just bearing well in mind, it is beta software. Um, there is also a Facebook group dedicated just to the beta as well, separate from the regular Ecamm Facebook group. So I'll leave a link to all of these things in the description. But without further ado, let's get on to the new features, shall we? And uh, first and foremost is the one right at the top there, which is it adds the ability to assign Mac OS shortcuts uh, to various actions within the app. So what is shortcuts? Well, uh, We've had shortcuts on iOS. This is a Mac uh, application. Uh, we've had this on iOS for a number of years now, and it basically allows you to create custom actions, custom shortcuts, uh, different automations uh, that you can then trigger from either the shortcuts app or from different contextual menus within iOS as well, or from other applications as well. As of macOS Monterey, this is now being brought over to the Mac as well. So we have had, uh, obviously, Apple's built-in automator for, uh, well, years and years now on uh, macOS. Uh, but this is to basically give parity to the two uh, sort of uh, uh, automation apps that you've got on the two platforms. So shortcuts will allow you to access all of the shortcuts you've created on iOS, although some of them may not work depending on what apps they're triggering and things like that. Um, but you can also create Mac-specific shortcuts in there as well. So how have Ecamm worked with this uh, application. Well, let's have a little look, shall we? If I bring up the uh, uh, preferences from Ecamm Live, so uh, if you are a, a user and on the beta program, I'm assuming you know how to get to this. Go to the Ecamm Live beta menu, come down to the preferences, and it'll open up this uh, Ecamm Live preferences menu. Well, in here, we've uh, now got this extra one at the end here, you can see, uh, which says shortcuts. Now in here, we basically can assign four different shortcuts. So uh, the things we've got here are, uh, it says automatically trigger a Mac OS shortcut when uh, one of the following. So when Ecamm Live opens, we can assign a shortcut when a broadcast starts, uh, when a broadcast finishes, and finally when Ecamm Live quits. So this is basically just a drop down list. You can pick any of your um, uh, shortcuts. I'm just noticing because I'm showing the window, the little drop down menu isn't showing, but the rest assured, this is showing my list of all shortcuts we'll see this in a moment when I uh, when I give you a little demo it will all make sense so what we want to think about is what might we want to have happen when these things uh, are triggered well perhaps when uh, Ecamm Live opens uh, you are just about to record or you're just about to stream or something maybe you want to close down some other apps maybe you want to close down things like Dropbox or something like that uh, there are other ways to do this I did make a video about trip mode which I'll leave up in the uh, that top corner um, which is uh, a great app for basically shutting off internet access to different things so they're not taking up your bandwidth um, but uh, you may just want to if you're not using that app you may want to just close down things that would ordinarily be a data hog so uh, I'm going to just do this as a little example we'll say when Ecamm Live opens we want to close Dropbox I mean you could also add things in there like Adobe Creative Cloud or anything like that as well um, then when the broadcast starts well let's say uh, when the broadcast starts we want to switch on do not disturb so that we don't get any notifications coming through uh, but then when the broadcast finishes we want to uh, turn off do not disturb uh, and then when Ecamm Live quits we want to reopen those applications that we've uh, chosen so this is just a little example I mean I've got other ways of doing that as well so I tend to use keyboard maestro a lot uh, which is why I've been sleeping on uh, <laughs> shortcuts for some time to be honest since I upgraded to Monterey because uh, I do do a lot of stuff with keyboard maestro but over this next week I'll be making a lot more videos about shortcuts and really digging into uh, more of the functionality there but this is just the example that I'm going to do today so uh, let's see how we could actually set that up. So I've come over to my uh, Shortcuts app. This is Mac OS Shortcuts. Uh, it's already transferred over, already just opened up with all of the shortcuts that I've been using uh, up to now on uh, iOS. Um, so uh, they're generally OmniFocus related, task management, stuff like that. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create uh, four more new actions in here. We're gonna create these ones to turn off Do Not Disturb, uh, and then also these ones to open and shut different apps as well. So let's uh, come to the little plus icon here. This may be co uh, totally blank for you. I'm not sure. It depends on uh, how you've got your uh, shortcut set up, if you've been using it up until now. So what I'm going to do is when I click on that, it's opened up another window, which if I come over to here and just get it all nicely lined up for you. There we go. 
This is where we're going to build out our actions and uh, or our shortcuts rather and we've got a list of actions over on this side and we can just sort of drag things in or we can click up here to search for a particular action that we want to uh, trigger um, and then there's different ways to categorize this so there's things related to sharing things related to documents things related to the web and so on uh, as I say I'm going to do a whole series on uh, shortcuts uh, and uh, some things that you could do to get some uh, extra productivity out of your Mac. Um, but what we're going to do for today is just keep it really simple. What I want to do is I want to trigger do not disturb. So this is one that I'm going to have turning on and off. Um, so up here, I'm going to give this a name as uh, do not disturb. Uh, let's just say on. So this is where I'm going to switch it on. This is the shortcut name up here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is come over to here and I'll need to look for do not disturb. Actually, now it's called focus because uh, there can be different profiles for uh, your different levels of focus. <laughs> and so if I come down here, we can see one here that says set focus. So I'm going to just double click that one and it will come in. There we go. Uh, or you can just drag them. And so here it says to turn do not disturb. Uh, and you can see how here it's got those different uh, focus levels that we can uh, set on our iOS and on the Mac. I'm just going to leave that as do not disturb. Uh, and then here it's saying off or on. So let me just say on until turned off. So uh, that was just clicking on that. Those are the two options. So I'm just going to click it on until turned off. Um, you can also do a specific time and things like that. But for the sake of this, all we want to do is have it turn on until it's turned off because we're going to turn it off through Ecamm Live. So that is as simple as it gets. We've now created that action. Uh, and if I come back down to uh, my shortcuts view, uh, you can see now there we've got do not disturb on. And I'm just going to make this one uh, a different color. So you can come in here and change the uh, color. Uh, or you can rename it, things like that. But I'm just going to change the color and I'm going to change this one to uh, Ecamm Orange <laughs> or as close to uh, because then I'm going to know that these things are all related to Ecamm. So now I'm going to come and create another one. So that was Do Not Disturb on. I'm going to do exactly the same now. Uh, just come in here and search for uh, Focus again. And you see we can just drag it over as well. And so this one we want to turn Do Not Disturb off. It's as simple as that. Do Not Disturb off. So that is another one. You can see that this has basically got a sort of tabbed view at the top here. So all of these actions that I'm creating in here, I'm just opening them up and keeping them all open so you can work on multiple actions at once if you want, uh, or multiple shortcuts, I should say. And here I'm going to just change the uh, color to orange again so that I've got this little collection of them. Uh, and now I'm just going to do the same for closing different apps. So if I uh, come back up to here, and in this one, what I want to do is uh, close. I think that's what I type. I'll oh, quit, of course. Uh, so click on there. And then here it's going to say here, I'm going to quit an app. Um, or you can end a task or things like that. But here I'm going to quit an app and I'm going to click on choose. Uh, and I'm just going to use this as an example. Let's say you just want to totally quit Dropbox so that it's not trying to churn away in the background and do anything. Uh, and so here I'm just going to label this one as quit apps. I'm going to call it quit apps because you could obviously add in multiple different ones. So if you wanted to add in Adobe Creative Cloud and all those sorts of things in here as well, or any other apps that you have running in the background, uh, you could just add those in here as a big long string. And so uh, I could just add that in there, click on here, uh, and then let's see if I can find it. Uh, there we go, Creative Cloud. Uh, so that would quit that one as well. I'm just going to toggle that one off for, that for now, but you can see how you can basically just build up whole uh, stacks of different actions within a given shortcut. So now I'm going to come back down to this app here. There we go, with the click of a button. <laughs> and so there I've got my quit apps, and I'm just going to change the color of that one so that it all looks nice and pretty, <laughs> and the same color coding as the rest. Uh, and then one more is going to be, uh, I'm going to call this one Open Apps. Uh, help if I share the right screen with you. There you go. Open apps like that. And so here, what I want to do is I want to open uh, an application. So if I scroll down, uh, you can see it is giving me uh, suggestions, by the way, of different uh, things here that I might want to open. But I'm going to come down here and click open app. And then here, I'm just going to do the, exactly the same as we did before. So Dropbox, uh, so as simple as that. So now basically here you can see along the top, I've got my uh, four actions. This one is do not disturb on. So it's turning do not disturb on until it is turned off. Uh, this one is just turning do not disturb off. 
This one is quitting any apps, and I've only just put one in there for now, quitting Dropbox. Uh, and then this one is opening Dropbox. So those are the four actions. And if I come down to my shortcuts, here you can see these are the, uh, the four actions that I've got across the top. So now if I come back over to Ecamm Live, here what we want to do is when Ecamm Live opens, let's say we want to uh, trigger that Dropbox app. So we want to, sorry, the quit apps. So I'm just going to come down to this drop down list. It's not showing up on here, but it is just a little drop down. <laughs> so you can see that that adds in the uh, quit apps shortcut. Then here, when the broadcast starts, I want to turn on do not disturb. Then when the broadcast finishes, I want to turn off do not disturb. And when Ecamm Live quits, I want to uh, open apps. So that would open whatever I'd put in there. And that is as simple as it gets. Uh, so here you can see how uh, this could be really useful for just triggering any, triggering any number of actions. And in the coming videos, I'll be doing stuff that is a little bit more complex than this, uh, thing, other things that you may want to do or uh, work into this or, or just do with shortcuts in general. But I'm pl really pleased to see that this feature has been added into Ecamm. It's uh, the start of <laughs> some level of automation built in, which uh, I'm always very excited about. So what else was added in? Well, let's have a little look at uh, the uh, next key feature which was uh, overlays position behind locked overlays can now be manipulated. So this is something that uh, uh, used to be a little bit frustrating in some, some cases. If you had got uh, overlays that covered the whole screen, uh, say, for example, it might be a, a border overlay or something like that. I mean, we don't tend to use those as much now since we've got uh, all these pretty uh, rounded corners and borders and things like that on camera overlays. But um, if you have got a particular overlay that's going over other things, then if it's there and it's locked and it's taking up a lot of space, but you want to manipulate something behind it, you would have to go and previously hide the overlay, move the one behind it, unhide the overlay and so on. So uh, what they've done now is basically just meant that uh, the locked overlays pretty much just get ignored by the uh, anything that you're trying to do on the screen. So uh, let's have a little look at this in practice, shall we? So here I've just basically got two overlays, a red square and a blue square, and I can move those around. Now in the past, if this red square was over here, let's say, I mean, this could be just as easily a full screen with a cutout or something like that. But if this was over here and I was to lock it, so I'm going to come down here to my little uh, overlays panel and I'm just going to click the little uh, padlock to lock it. So now that one is locked, it won't move. Um, but now if I want to move the, uh, the blue square, obviously I'd have to just grab the edge of that. Now this is very easy to do here, but when this was full screen before, uh, so let's say I'd got this as a, uh, a graphical overlay around my camera, although it's... It, it's not in this particular version, but um, uh, what they've done is basically just meant that now you can see if I hover over this red square, it does highlight. But as soon as I come over an overlay that is underneath it, that now is the uh, active overlay that I'm able to move. So I am able to move stuff that is behind uh, another overlay by just grabbing on it uh, in the usual way. So even if the blue square, square was completely hidden, uh, then I can still move over here and uh, just still grab it because it's basically just ignoring the uh, red one from the point of view of being able to grab and manipulate the overlay. So I hope that that is uh, clear enough. But uh, that is basically the uh, the second feature that was added into this beta. And uh, that was all of them, really. There were a couple of fixes that were uh, added in as well. Um, but generally, that was the uh, the two new features that were added and very pleased I am about them too. So uh, watch out for those new videos coming up. Of course, if you have enjoyed this video, as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and why not share it with a friend? <laughs> and if you really found it useful, then you can always head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page uh, at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. And there you can support the channel on a one-off or continuing basis. Uh, and while I'm at it, if you want any help with your tech life or with Ecamm Live, you can always go over and book a consultation at takeonetech.io slash consultation. Uh, and there I'll help you with any tech issues you are having uh, with the sort of stuff that I'm talking about on the channel. But that's all for now. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll leave a link to some other great videos over on the right hand side. So until the next video, have a wonderful few minutes.